Hi there, and welcome to your very first tutorial on creating an iOS app inside Xamarin Studio. Now, as you can see from my screen, I'm running this on a Macintosh computer. You can do this on a Windows computer, but in order to run the app, you will need to be connected to another Macintosh on your network. So the first step is to load up Xamarin Studio. And if you look at the left hand side, we have a whole range of apps that I'm currently making and an option to create a new solution. So we go ahead and click that and we come up with a whole bunch of options. And the one that we want for iOS apps is under C Sharp, iOS and Unified Appy. Now the difference between these two, Classic and Unified, is that Classic is for the older iOS devices running on 32-bit processors, and the Unified Appy is for newer devices that run on 64-bit processors. And as of February 2015, Apple required that everything submitted to the App Store is compiled under 64-bit. So if you're creating apps, from now on, you will always click the Unified Appy, and then once in there, you have more options, Extensions, iPad, iPhone, and Universal. Universal allows you to create an app for both iPad and iPhone, and generally, it's the one that we want. Now, because our app is a simple, single-screen app, it's just going to display Hello World, we want to create a single-view application. And in the Apple world, each screen that gets put onto your device is known as a view in Apple terminology. And that knowledge will come in handy later. So we're just going to call this Hello World and click OK. So once your app has been loaded, you'll notice on the left hand side we have a whole bunch of files and folders. And all of these files and folders are unique to the Apple operating system. So as with any bit of software, it needs to know where to start. And in the Apple world, it always starts with the main .cs file. And in here, there's just one instruction, and that's telling your application to fire up this app delegate which is this file. Now the app delegate serves a special purpose. It loads up the windows and the views that you will have inside your app, and it communicates with the operating system. So if the operating system wants to shut down your app, first it tells app delegate to come down here, and it says, hey, I'm going to terminate your app so I'm giving you a few seconds to do something about it. So in here, you could do whatever instructions that you wanted, like save user data before app closes. And that would allow you to do that. Okay, now the app delegate opens up your first window. And your windows are controlled by what are called view controllers in the Apple system. And because we selected a single view application, Xamarin automatically created a view controller for us. So when I double click Hello World View Controller, I get this file. Now this file will contain most of the logic for this screen of your app. In particular, we want to look at this method here, which is your public override void view did load. That simply says, once your view has loaded, you need to do some stuff with it. And Xamarin helpfully says, you can perform any additional setup after loading the view, typically from a nib. So in here, we want to put all of our text views and our buttons and our interactive user elements and the way we do that is by declaring some stuff. And in the Apple world, if we want to create something like a label, we would declare it by saying UI 
label and we would give it a name. So I would call this hello label. Now in any programming language it's always a good idea to name your variables in this way with a lowercase first letter we call this camel casing and we want to end the name <coughs> with the actual type of object. So when we're typing it out in a, another piece of our code and we start typing hello, it'll come up with the option of hello label. And we will know instantly that that refers to the hello label rather than the hello button or the hello text field or the hello fancy widget something else. So once we've declared it, we need to give it some properties. And we do that by calling it again. And we're going to make it equal to a new UI label. And that just says, take this label that I've made and initialize it, make it a new object, and give it some properties. Now, the first thing we have to do is tell the label where we want it to go on our screen. And all Apple devices have their screen set in X and Y coordinates. <clears throat> so the X coordinate is horizontal and the Y is vertical. And we always start, as you look at your device, in the top left-hand corner. So zero, zero is in the top left-hand corner. So we're going to do that by setting a property called frame. And we're going to make it equal to a new core graphics dot cg rect. That just simply says, I want you to put this label inside a new rectangle and I'm going to pass you some values that tells you where to draw this rectangle. So we open up our brackets and I want to put this label, let's say 50 pixels from the edge of my device going in the horizontal direction. So I'll say 50 and then I'll put a comma and then I want you to put it 50 down from the top of my device. So 50 again and another comma. So that simply says, hey, I'd like you to put it at 50 and 50 X and Y. The next thing it needs to know is how wide do you want this to be? So we're going to say we'll make it 120 wide and we'll make it a height of 40. And we'll close our brackets and put a comma. And we'll go to the next line. So now we have our label, but it isn't showing anything yet. So when it shows on our screen, we won't see anything. We have to tell it what to display. And we do that in labels by typing text equal to whatever you want to call it, hello world. And then we press enter and we close our curly braces. So now we've created a hello label. We've said, make this hello label a new label. And I want you to put it inside this frame and I want you to give it this text. Well, that's all well and good, but we have to do one more step to show this label. Oh, sorry, I've forgotten one thing. We have to put another semicolon there. So our next step to show this label is to say, okay, I have this view and we call the view by typing view, which makes sense. And then we want to add the label. So as you might guess, you start by typing add sub view, like that. And then we open up our bracket and the UI label, hello label, is simply a sub view of the bigger view that we're working with. So we want to type hello label. Close your bracket, semicolon. And then we're gonna save that. And we're going to try and run that in our simulator. So we go up here 
to our debug, which is the one we want. And we go over here, and at the top you'll notice we can run a simulator. So I'll just select my iPhone 5 on iOS 8.1, and I'm going to click play. And what Xamarin is going to do is going to build your whole application. It's going to fire up the iOS simulator. And once it's done that, it's going to push your application into it. And it's going to listen for things that go wrong in your application. Right, so here we have our application loaded. And as you recall, we said there's only one screen. And on that screen, we want to put one label. And we want to put it. 50 pixels across and 50 pixels down and we want to put text hello world into it. And that's it. That concludes your very first iOS lesson. But I'm going to give you an extra little bit of information. It's going to come in very, very handy when you're developing things. So if we go back to Xamarin Studio and we click stop, that shuts down our app inside the emulator. And we come back to our view controller. Now when we're programming, it's really handy to know that things are executing correctly inside our code. So what we can do is we can write to what's called the console in Xamarin. And that's just a little text-based box that tells us anything that we've told our application to send to it. So, for example, here I might want to write console dot write line, and then inside here I just simply give it something to tell me. So I, I will say hello world label created. Close my brackets, and there we go. So now the next time that your application runs, it's going to run through all of this code. It's going to create our label, create a new instance of that label, draw it in this rectangle, give it this text. And if all of this works and we get no errors, it's going to write to our console and say, hey man, I just created a hello world label. So this is a very handy way to tell us where we are inside our code. And at the moment, the application is very simple, but when you get to bigger and bigger applications, that is really, really handy to have. So we're just going to run that, and it should load up our simulator. And if you look in the background here, in Xamarin, we have an application output window. So it gives you a whole bunch of stuff saying, hey, I've started the iPhone 5, I've launched your application, and I'm loading all of these assemblies, which we can ignore. Then, this dark text is the console write lines that I've invoked inside my app. And you can see this one here says, hello world, label created. So that tells me exactly where we are inside the app. That concludes your very first lesson in Xamarin Studio.